again in the clinic and today we have a very prominent guest. We have Professor Hania Teba, President of the Scottish Cardiac Society and Vice President of the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons at Glasgow. Welcome doctor, we're very pleased to have you. Delighted to be here. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, so first I'm going to ask you about the ideal management of acute myocardial infarction. Well, first of all, myocardial infarction is a life-threatening condition which is caused by blockage in one of the main coronary arteries with a blood clot. And the basic principle of management of a heart attack when it happens is to identify the condition as soon as possible and transfer, if possible, the patient to a facility to open up the blocked artery and restore the blood flow to the heart muscle. So to achieve that, we start very early. We have very important educational program to let particularly those who are at a high risk of a heart attack understand what the classic symptoms of acute myocardial infarction are. And also, we not only ask individuals, but their relatives and family members, so they can all be aware of, one, what is the measure important for prevention, but also when it happens to be diagnosed very early in the course. Thereafter, it depends what circumstances and what situation where you are. If you live in a remote and rural area where facilities for cath lab, opening up the arteries and expertise are not immediately available, we suggest treating patients with thrombolytic therapy, then transfer the patient immediately to a cath lab or hospital facilities with a cath lab. And if the patient arrived and the thrombolytic agent worked, we wait for the thrombolytic agent to wash out, and then we do chronoangiography and with a view to opening up the blocked artery the following day or within 24 hours. If the patient arrived to hospital and the thrombolytic agent did not work, we proceed to rescue angioplasty. And the advantage of this practice or this protocol, which we call it optimum myocardial reper reperfusion therapy, is that you save the time after you, de you, you, you deliver the thrombolytic agent and whether you arrive and require rescue angioplasty or you, you need uh, to wait for the following day, you are in the right place. Most importantly is that you need to determine that you are not going to spend more than 90 minutes to two hours on the road. If that excessive delay is expected, we advise patients and healthcare professionals to administer thrombolytic agent provided that there is no contraindication. But of course, the treatment of choice is as early as possible, find access to hospital with cath lab facilities and a team that is available 24 hour per day to ensure that they can open up this artery promptly. So, but if you cannot have this access for any reason, whether you are contraindicated to receive thrombolysis, or you live far away, you know, uh, from a center with the facilities, thrombolytic agent is the best. But importantly, also, we have to realize a very crucial fact here that a significant proportion of patients who had heart attack may not receive neither thrombolytic therapy nor primary angioplasty. And these people are missed sometimes because the symptoms are misled or confused with other conditions like heartburn or muscular pain or just a common cold. And therefore, it is very important to educate the patient and public about the symptoms and presentation of a heart attack. And should it happen, you receive what is best available for you. Do not delay what is best for you. And what do you advise doctors who are uh, encountered with the patients who have a heart attack? What, wha what, is your, what is one advice that you can give to them? The one advice that you can give healthcare professionals in where I work, the first thing we do, we ask patients to immediately, even if they don't know if they have a heart attack or not, we ask them to phone 999, which is the emergency care an ambulance team will go there and do an ECG 
control the pain and identify whether this is a heart attack or not. And this is the best way. It's a life-threatening problem and you know, 50% of the patient who do not survive myocardial infarction will die in the first hour because of arrhythmias. And therefore, if you strongly suspect a heart attack, the most important issue, ensure that this patient reach hospital facilities so they can have immediate care. Okay, thank you so much, Professor. No problem. And we're very pleased to have you among us, and we hope that the doctors who have watched have benef benefit from your information. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. <laughs>